my name is Paige. Welcome to my channel. It's been a couple of weeks, guys, but I am finally back with my Gettysburg videos. This is the first video in a two-part series. Um, so this video will have our first day there and also the two ghost tours that we went on while we were there. And the second video, which will be coming in a couple of weeks, will have us going to the battlefields, Devil's Den. Um, and also, I went to a used bookstore, so I also will have that in that video. So look forward to that. But for this video, I will be telling you about the ghost tours and the food we ate there. And so you will hear more about the Jenny Wade house, which we went to at night. We had a tour of it. Uh, Jenny Wade was the only civilian casualty in the Battle of Gettysburg, so kind of spooky. Um, and also we went to the Gettysburg Orphanage. Very creepy. So I have footage of both of those places. Not too much, but I will talk you through the history and our experience there. Um, so that will be kind of near the end of this video. And then if you stay tuned to the very end, I will talk to you about an upcoming spooky video that will be uploaded on Halloween, hopefully. So... We're back at it again, guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you at the end. So as some of you might already know, today is the day that I am in Gettysburg. We just arrived not like 30 minutes ago. Uh, we already checked into our hotel, which is the 1863 Inn. It's kind of in the heart of Gettysburg. So I am overlooking this view right now. Um, later on we're going to be going over there which is an Irish pub um, so I'll be excited to show you guys that and then of course we have this whole beautiful line of shops I think that is a fudge maybe shop over there I don't know if you guys can see but yeah we're basically gonna be walking around the town I'm gonna show you a couple of these stores that we go into um, of course the food that we eat at the Irish pub and um, we're also planning on going on a ghost tour and battlefield stuff and all that. So yeah, before we get into that, I thought I'd give you a quick um, hotel tour. So here we are. Obviously, we're on a balcony. We're on the third floor. Then we have Troy over here. And then Emily over there, who is knitting. <laughs> and um, it's, it's a pretty simple setup. I mean, we've already populated the entire room with snacks and um, book bags and beanies but got a little TV got a little Emily and a bathroom thank God <laughs> so pretty simple setup So this is kind of the hotel we always stay in when we come to Gettysburg. We come here, it's kind of like a family thing. We come here every year, every other year. And this has always been the hotel we stayed in. I hope one year I'll be able to stay in a bed and breakfast and potentially vlog that uh, because I've heard that the bed and breakfasts here are haunted. Ooh, so anyway, I will film again when we are on ground level and I will talk to you then. <laughs> That's cool. It's war stuff. Okay. Here we go. Here. Super realistic. Uh, like military soldiers. This is really neat. Hot sauce. What is that? The colon cleaner. Whoa. After death. I swear I've heard of that. I thought I saw the hot ones label. I know some of these. Like that one. Fifty shades Micro of batch. Sweet Liquid stupid. This is really cool. Pork marinade. Budweiser? Yep. What? Budweiser? Like Gettysburg one, cannon fire. This is interesting. 
Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Hot sauce from That's hell. It. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, Paige. Um, um, uh, um, things that Troy doesn't need, but Troy very much wants to buy. Are you guys going to get anything that's useless on this trip? Most likely, but not from you. Yeah. Well, then I'm getting one of those gas masks. <laughs> Tis a hat? Tis a hat. Tis a hat. I'm so done. Pineapple training greens. Homemade gelato. Vegan. Wow. Homemade? Are you like a, are you like a sponsor? I didn't even see your hand. Hold on. There you go. <laughs> we are walking a very comfortably slow pace behind us. But just close enough that I'm uncomfortable. Is this interesting? Yes, let's stop here and look at it. It's so interesting. What is wrong? You're perfect. There are things popping up. What is wrong? What is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong with your ground today? Oh, I have to, Paige. Every, sing every single time. Every single time. This, this is what... That's exactly what I need. A size That is what Paige's channel exists for. There are two elements of your videos that are very consistent, <laughs> I've realized. Twilight and animals. Farnsworth House Dining. It does look very abandoned, but that could be just because it's an escape room. I say we check that out when there aren't 700 cars. Oh, well, actually, okay, well, yeah, okay, come on, come on, come on. So we're checking this bad boy out. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it looks like a wine, oh, wine and cheese, it says. I wonder if they'd care if I was filming in here. ghost tour we went on was actually the Gettysburg um, Orphanage. I had never been to the orphanage um, prior to this visit because I actually didn't know it existed but that was definitely our highest priority that tour and when we went to go book it or we went to go pay for it because I booked through the phone they told us that they actually made another tour for Jenny Wade which we were able to then book um, to go into right after we finished the orphanage tour. So basically um, for the orphanage tour we kind of walked around the grounds and we looked into the 
neighboring cemetery so we were kind of just like talking about ghost stories talking about the experiences at the house or at the orphanage and then eventually we made our way into the orphanage itself so the history of the orphanage is a little bit complex and um, I couldn't take notes exactly while I was walking through but the reason why the orphanage is supposed to be haunted and the reason why it has such a bad rep is because of the headmistress there so her name was Rosa Carmichael and prior to her taking over I believe that the orphanage was actually pretty successful um they had a really good system going and then she came in and she was such a harsh discipl disciplinarian that she actually made a dungeon for the kids who would misbehave and she would she would tie them up she would um, shackle them to the walls keep them from food and water it was absolutely horrendous what she did so you can actually still see the holes in the stone walls where those um, shackles were put and so yeah, after she took over, basically it was a living hell for the kids there. Um, and so the tour guide took us around the upper level, which was the dining room area where the kids ate, which is all period accurate as far as I could tell. And I have pictures of that. And also there is so sort of a recreation of a, of a hole that I guess she would put children in. So you can kind of see how the children were treated uh, when they were being disciplined. And after we got done on the top level, uh, with the tour guide kind of finishing the story for us, she took us down to the basement, actually, which is where most of the dis discipline happened. And we sat around and then group by group she took us into this crawl space um, where we were basically forced to sit in utter darkness um, because there's there's a crawl space in a crawl space so basically there's a very narrow passageway with like pipes and everything and then um, as you'll see hopefully clearly there's a very tiny uh, crawl space that you kind of come up into it's it's stone it's completely stone and it's terrifying and it's like a sand uh, floor and we were crouching there basically in the dark for how many minutes to see if we could catch any phenomenon on our cameras or recording devices so that's what that's all about I just felt breath. After we came out of that experience, um, we sat around and she told us about how basically the orphanage was shut down or uh, reevaluated by the state um, because people were already suspicious of, of what was happening there. It was just that it was hard to, I guess, prove or not a lot of people were motivated because of the time period. But anyway, what happened was a little boy was sent out to, I believe, an outhouse um, where he was tied up, I believe, um, and a man heard crying. So this is another paranormal experience that people have. They hear children crying um, for hours and hours on end, and when they go looking, um, there's nothing there. So that happens a lot in the courtyard, which is, I think, where this boy was found. But he was tied up, and a older, an older gentleman was walking around, and he heard the crying and went to investigate and found the boy half-starved, dehydrated, tied up, and when he asked the boy what was going on, why was he there, he said that he was, um, he was being punished by Carmichael. So that was kind of the beginning of the end for Carmichael, and yet, I believe she got away she got away with it so um, she was forced to relocate I believe but that was the extent I believe of her punishment I wouldn't say that um, the tour that took place outside was very creepy I mean in reality when you take a ghost tour in Gettysburg you're gonna come across a lot of modern just a lot of modern noise so lots of cars lots of buses people talking there's it, Gettysburg is a very busy town so when you go on a ghost tour and you go outside, that's what you're going to run into. But we went actually inside the orphanage. That was when things really kind of got darker. Um, 
made me feel very uncomfortable, especially in the basement. So if you're looking to do that tour, I highly recommend it. I think it is worth the money. We spent only $10, so really nothing in comparison. Whoa, where'd you get that coat from? Where'd you get that sweet Sherpa from? Dude, weird. You th you would have thought I would have did that or something. So as I said before, Jenny Wade was actually the only civilian casualty in the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, she was actually with her mother and her two brothers, and she traveled to Gettysburg to stay with her sister. So it is actually her sister's house that we went and visited. Um, and basically what happened was she was kneading bread in the morning, I think it was around 8 a.m., and a stray bullet, whatever the specific term is for the bullet that hit her, came through the door at just the right angle, um, hit her um, at, on her left shoulder blade, I think it was, and went pierced straight through her heart. So she died instantly. And I believe there were Union soldiers staying in the house, so they ran downstairs, they carried her body um, to the basement where they laid her until they had the time and the safety to actually bury her in the backyard so jenny wade was buried three separate times her family buried her in the backyard and then she was relocated to another cemetery uh and then again she was exhumed and buried in the evergreen cemetery which is kind of like gettysburg's famous cemetery <clears throat> So Jenny Wade is actually kind of hailed as a hero of the Battle of Gettysburg because the the bread that she was baking was for the Union soldiers. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog snorting, he's sleeping, but yeah, she was um, she was baking bread for them. So later on, um, her mother was granted a pension because they treated her daughter like she was she died in service to the battle because she was baking bread for the soldiers. So something a little bit sad about the tale of Jenny Wade, apart from the fact that she died and she was the only civilian casualty, which really sucks, um, she was betrothed to a Union soldier. So when Jenny was fatally shot, she actually didn't know that her fiance was in captivity and he would never find out that she died either because only a week later he died in captivity. But what's kind of nice about it is that Jenny is actually buried quite close to Jack um, in the Evergreen Cemetery, so at least, I, at least there's some sort of comfort there, I guess. As for um, my experience in the Jenny Wade house, uh, it's a very popular spot for ghost sightings. I've been there twice, so I went there maybe a few years ago. Um, one of the first times I went to Gettysburg, I visited the Jenny Wade house, and I also went again this time because Emily had not seen it yet. Um, and I will say that the house definitely has sort of a creepier aura. It's a very small house. In fact, it's almost butted up against the 1863 Inn, which is the inn that we stayed at, which is a very big hotel. Going in there, it's very cramped. Um, the stairwells are very tiny. I personally have not experienced anything paranormal there, but there are a few stories that kind of circulate that house, and one of them is that there is a little boy that haunts um, the house. Nobody knows for certain who it is. Uh, I, I don't think that they believe it was one of Jenny's brothers. I think they think it was one of the other residents because the house was split in two, so one side Jenny's family lived on and the other side was another family completely. So there has been sightings of a little boy there. The owner, I was told, saw a little boy peeking. Um, there's like a stairwell and he was standing at the bottom and he looked over and saw a child's face kind of like peek over. So that was one of the sightings that I was told about. I was also led down to the basement where they laid Jenny's body for how many hours um, and we were all shown this like recording that was taken, I'm not sure when, but semi-recently and it basically it was taken down in the basement and you can hear, it was it was when the, the house I believe was, was empty and you can hear um, sort of this like mumbling conversation between what sounds like an older man and a little boy. Um, and there's also like a humming, like a, the boys like humming a song. Another interesting thing that they keep in the house, if you ever are interested in visiting, they actually do keep the, I believe it's the floor, the floorboard or the, it's a chunk of wood where Jenny's blood, you can see her blood splattered on it. I'm not sure exactly what, what would possess a person to keep that, um, 
but I guess historically it's uh, valuable but they do actually have that behind the glass if you ever want to go and look at it and they also have other artifacts from the family the house etc I highly recommend going to the genuine house on an off season so we went very close to Halloween and a lot of people go to Gettysburg to get those spooky experiences and it really retracts from the experience to have to kind of push your way through a group of people just to see like a bed um, so definitely if you're looking into visiting Gettysburg, try to go to on and off season if you can because it was much creepier and much more intimate the first time I went because I, I was in a group of four people. So we basically had free run of the house and it's much spookier if you're able to actually hear um, the creaks and groans and peculiar noises of the house rather than hearing the heavy breathing of the dude next to you. Okay guys, so that is the end of my footage for day one of Gettysburg. Like I said, you can look forward to the second Gettysburg vlog, which is still a little bit spooky because we are going to the battlefields and we we explore Devil's Den and all those kind of um, iconic places. So you can look forward to that. However, the next video that I will be uploading on Halloween will be my uh, October wrap up. So basically I'm in a race to finish the scary books that I'm reading right now, which wish me luck. I'm going to do my best to probably finish them tomorrow. Hopefully. I mean, Halloween's on Thursday. So anyway, uh, wish me luck on that. And I will see you back here on Thursday, aka Halloween. So yeah, I'll see you then. Bye. Uh